Welcome to our channel where we help you master business English. Today, we're focusing on writing effective business emails, a skill that's crucial for any professional. Using our Stellar Sneakers project as a backdrop, we'll cover 20 essential vocabulary words, a structured approach to email writing, 15 types of business emails, and practical tips and examples. In four different sections, you can pause the video and write your emails. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped to write clear and professional emails. Let's get started. First, let's talk about 20 essential vocabulary items you'll need when writing business emails. Basic email elements for all emails are Subject line Survey on sneaker preferences Salutation Dear and the name of your email receiver in a formal greeting, if the name is known, Dear Mr. Chen. In a formal greeting, if the name is not known, you may write, To whom it may concern. It is best, however, to write the name of an individual. Then we have the signature. Best regards, your name, the name of the email sender. The email content starts with the introduction. For example, I hope this email finds you well. Then, the purpose. For our example, the reason for this survey is to gather insights on our new sneaker design. And the current situation. Example. Currently, we are in the development phase of Stellar Sneakers. We continue the email content with the problem. For example, we need more user feedback to finalize the design. If there is a problem, it is best to highlight the impact of the problem. Your insights will help us create a product that meets your needs. Next, the solution. We are conducting a survey to collect your valuable feedback. The next section focuses on requests and actions. In our example for the Stellar Sneakers product, our request is, could you please take a few minutes to complete our survey? The follow-up is, we will follow up with the survey results next week. It is always helpful to give your receiver a deadline for the action requested. Please respond by Friday. Clarification. Friday deadline is important as we are planning a design team review on the following Monday. The next section focuses on inquiry, an invitation for your receiver to ask questions to better understand the request. Inquiry. If you have any questions about the survey, please let us know. You may attach a confirmation if necessary. Confirmation. Please confirm receipt of this email and completion of the survey. Here is the vocabulary sections for closing the email. Conclusion. Example. Thank you for your time and assistance. Closing statement. Example. Looking forward to your response. Additional vocabulary you will use from time to time. Recipient. Dear valued customer. And attachment please find the attached document for your review. Of course, not every email will require all these sections. The content of your email will vary based on the type of email you are writing. Later on in this video, we will reveal 15 different types of business emails, so keep watching. Now that you have the vocabulary, here's a logical structure for many business emails to help you stay organized and professional. The subject line. What is this about? Greetings and salutation. Dear, plus the name of your email receiver. Introduction. Briefly introduce yourself. Purpose. Purpose of the email. Current situation. Explain the current situation or context. Problem. Describe the problem or challenge. Impact. Why is this a problem? Discuss the impact. Solution. Propose a solution or course of action. Follow-up. Specify any follow-up action required and the deadline. Conclusion. Close with a summary and thank the recipient. Then, your signature. Best regards and your name. Do you see how that structure makes everything clear and easy to follow? It's like building a house. You need a strong framework. Now, let's dig deeper into each item. First, the subject line. The subject line lets the receiver know what this email is about. It helps the receiver to decide how urgent the email is. 
many people make decisions as to whether they should immediately open an email based on the subject line. So think about it carefully. You should always write a subject line. If you're replying to an email and the subject of your email is the same, do not change the subject line. If you change your topic, then change the subject to match your new topic. Better yet, start a new email conversation. The ideal subject uses short noun phrases, for example, invitation to meeting September 4th, 2025, meeting schedule, project update, feedback request, survey reminder, new design. Your greetings set the tone for your email. Let's look at some examples for different levels of formality, greetings and salutations, formal greetings, dear Yang, Dear Sir or Madam, Dear Mr. Megot, You should always write in the name of the person who is receiving the email. You increase the chances of receiving a response to your email. Use Dear for formal emails. For less formal greetings, you may use the following greetings. Hello. Hi, Ryan. Follow with polite phrases like, I hope you're well. I hope your project is going well. Awesome. You've got your greetings down. Remember, starting your email with the right tone can make all the difference. Next up, let's talk about explaining why you're writing. To explain why you're writing, keep it short and to the point. Here are some phrases to get you started. Introduction. Explaining why you're writing. Make your purpose clear quickly. I'm writing regarding. I wanted to follow up on, I would like to ask about, in our example, our introduction with explanation for why we are writing is, I hope all is well with you. I'm the team lead for our Stellar Sneakers design team. I am writing regarding the feedback we received on Stellar Sneakers. Many customers have mentioned they would like to see more color options. Optional introductions could be, I wanted to follow up on our last meeting about the new product launch. I would like to ask about the next steps in our development process. Here is your opportunity to practice what you are learning. Pause the video and practice writing an introduction for an email you need to write. If you are ready, let's move on. Now let's add some meat to the bones. This is where you provide the necessary details and context. Keep it concise with two to three sentences. Here are our examples. Current situation. Explain the current situation or context. Currently, we are in the development phase of Stellar Sneakers. Our goal is to create a product that meets the needs and preferences of our customers. Problem. Describe the problem or challenge. We need more detailed feedback from our target audience to finalize the design of the sneakers. Without this information, we risk creating a product that doesn't fully align with customer expectations. Again, you can practice what you are learning. Pause the video and practice writing the current situation and problem detail for an email you need to write. If you are ready, let's move on. Adding impact and solution sections helps the receiver appreciate the seriousness of your email. Impact. Why is this a problem? Discuss the impact. The lack of detailed feedback could also result in lower customer satisfaction and Stellar Sneakers' long-term growth. Solution. In this section, we propose a solution or course of action. To address this, we are conducting an extensive survey to gather insights from potential customers. This will help us make informed decisions on design features and enhancements. Now is your chance to practice what you are learning. Pause the video and practice writing the impact and solution sections for the email you are writing. If you are ready, let's move on. A clear call to action is crucial. Let your recipient know exactly what you need from them. Examples of phrases you can use are Request. What is the request or action required? Please. By tomorrow. At the latest. As a matter of urgency, you need to, could you please? I would like you to. Examples of a variety of sentences you could use are, 
please review the feedback and provide your recommendations by Friday. As a matter of urgency, you need to address the sizing issue with our manufacturer. Could you please confirm the new color options we can offer? Could you please take a few minutes to complete our new survey? Your input is crucial to our development process. If you are finding this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more business English lessons. What is your request or action required for the email you are writing? Pause the video and add this to your email draft. Think about who you're writing to and make your call to action appropriately direct or indirect. All set? Let's continue. Now introduce a deadline for an action, if this is appropriate. It usually is necessary. Follow-up. Specify any follow-up action required and the deadline. Please confirm your availability for a follow-up meeting by Friday so we can discuss the survey results and next steps. Here is your opportunity to continue practicing what you are learning. Pause the video and practice writing the follow-up for an email you need to write. If you are ready, let's move on. Let's finish strong with a proper conclusion and sign off. Here are some examples. Conclusion. Close with a summary and thank the recipient. Thank you for your time and assistance. We greatly appreciate your feedback and look forward to your response. Signature. Options. Formal sign off and your name. Regards. Best wishes. Kind regards. Informal sign offs. Cheers. Take care. Cheers, Katya. Let's put everything together with a longer example email using the Stellar Sneakers context. Dear Mr. Magat, I hope all is well with you. I'm the team lead for our design team. I'm writing regarding the feedback we received on Stellar Sneakers. Currently, we are in the development phase of Stellar Sneakers. Our goal is to create a product that meets the needs and preferences of our customers. We need more detailed feedback from our target audience to finalize the design of the sneakers. Without this information, we risk creating a product that doesn't fully align with customer expectations. The lack of detailed feedback could also result in lower customer satisfaction and Stellar Sneakers' long-term growth. To address this, we are conducting an extensive survey to gather insights from potential customers. This will help us make informed decisions on design features and enhancements. Could you please take a few minutes to complete our new survey? Your input is crucial to our development process. Please confirm your availability for a follow-up meeting by Friday so we can discuss the survey results and next steps. Thank you for your time and assistance. We greatly appreciate your feedback and look forward to your response. Best regards, Vijay Singh's team lead. We hope you found that email process helpful. There are, however, many types of business emails. Let's discuss the different types of business emails you might encounter in product development and their purposes and example introductions. Think about filling out the email details for each type of email that is important to your job. We have a request email which asks for information or assistance. For example, dear team, could you please provide your feedback on the new Stellar Sneakers design? Then there is the Request for Information, RFI email, which gathers additional details or clarifications. For example, Dear Supplier, we need detailed specifications for the new materials. Another is the Status Update email, which provides progress updates. For example, Dear Stakeholders, here is the weekly update on Stellar Sneakers development. We also have the Change Request email, where we propose modifications to features or design. It could begin like this. Dear team, I propose a change in the sneakers material to improve durability. Many of you know the bug report email which reports issues or defects. Dear development team, we have identified a defect in the new prototype. Another is the feature prioritization email where we communicate decisions about feature prioritization. Dear team, based on customer surveys, we should prioritize the new cushioning feature. We have user feedback emails where we share insights and results from user testing or surveys. It can begin like this. Dear team, here is the feedback from beta testers on sneaker comfort. There is the release announcement email that announces product releases. Dear stakeholders, we are excited to announce the release date of the new sneaker model. 
The design team might send out an email called the Design Review Email, inviting feedback on designs or prototypes. Dear team, please review the latest sneaker prototype and provide your feedback. The project manager may send out a resource allocation email, communicating changes in resources or budget. It could begin like this. Dear team, we are allocating additional resources for the design team to meet the deadline. The all-important risk assessment email discusses potential risks and mitigation strategies. For example, Dear team, we need to discuss potential delays due to material shortages and how to mitigate them. You may send an inquiry email seeking clarification or additional information. Dear supplier, I am writing to inquire about the progress of our order. The final three types of emails on our list are the complaint email, the follow-up email, and the thank you email. The complaint email addresses issues or problems. Dear manufacturer, we have noticed a delay in production and need this resolved urgently. The follow-up email is usually sent to check in on a previous request or action. Dear customer, just following up on the survey response we sent last week. Let's always remember the thank you email, which expresses gratitude. Dear customers, thank you for completing our survey and providing valuable feedback. Well, that's all for today's lesson. We covered 20 essential vocabulary words, a structured approach to email writing, four practice opportunities to write your email, 15 types of business emails, and other practical tips. Download the additional resources and templates linked in the description. See you in the next video where we learn basic business English and use this in the context of Stellar Sneakers product journey. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more business English lessons. Thank you for watching and join us in the next lesson.